So in this film, we're going to be looking at uh, fixing backgrounds um, using the Beta 25.9 Photoshop. And uh, before we kind of get into a little bit more kind of creative backgrounds, let's look at fixing first, yeah? So uh, kind of a little image like this can be pretty much fixed um, with just actually a few selections, in fact. Um, if I just quickly select those and we delete those, whoops. And um, all I did here, picked up the lasso tool, made the selection around the uh, elements that I want to get rid of. So um, the quick test that I just did, basically I did select them all at once. Um, so fingers crossed it's going to give us a similar result. The, um, by the way, these aren't cords hanging the dog. This is <laughs> hanging the actual clouds, yeah? So make that quick selection, and then all I'm hitting is basically the generate fill and just hit the generate. So that's all I did with this image. Obviously, if I want to then actually add some more background clouds in or whatever it is, I could be doing that, but I'm usually using that with the associated um, file now that we can do in 25.9. Um, and obviously, if we get a good result, then we can actually kind of generate similar. So we've kind of got some kind of fixes going on. It's even added in some clouds there for me. So what do I prefer? Um, probably actually the plain blue and things, really. So that's done a pretty good job for us without any trouble. This is one that I just made a, a bit of a longer film with for the Academy, where we're looking at the different comparisons between Photoshop uh, 2024 and basically now, as it were, uh, with the beta. Um, so let's quickly make the selection uh, around the whoops, around the subjects. Uh, we want to get close, uh, but not too close. When we kind of did this, first of all, in um, 25 sorry, in Photoshop, uh, the current one, 2024. Uh, basically, um, we, we just did this, then we went into the select in verse, and it kind of gave us copied figures actually onto the side. So let's just quickly hit the generate fill. I'm not typing anything in, so I'm not saying create white background with floor shadows for the subjects or something like that, okay? All we're doing is just kind of fix the problem. Obviously, the first thing to fix a problem is don't have the problem, but you know, in commercial studios or whatever it is, it could take you, uh, you run out of space of your background, you need to extend them and so on with it. But that's done a, a pretty good job there. It has put something in down here. Let's delete that one. But the one benefit that we do have with the likes of um, the beta, so there's two very, very similar, that's with a slightly cleaner background, and we can fix that anyway. Let's delete this one, and we'll just three dot it, the one that's left, and generate similar. So this is basically looking at this one image fix and saying, okay, he likes that. I'm going to basically create more like that for you. So then that's basically going to do some more of its magic. And we're going to get some more results there. Let's have a little look at those. So already it's done a better job than we had, I think. Let me just kind of look at what I'm making a decision on. And the way I could probably work here, in fact, is to use that image. I would encourage you to actually kind of get rid of the ones that you definitely don't want no matter what. Let's now basically uh, layer and we'll flatten the image. Or I could do Shift-Control-Alt-E to make a new layer based on um, all visible layers. Um, so I've just done that. And let's kind of just fix this. So in other words, if we went into the uh, adjustment layers and we went into levels, and then we just basically pick up the um, white picker and we click on something that is dark and we want it to become white. You can see it kind of bleaches all this out straight, uh, straight away. That's okay, because we can pull it back. So now all I'm gonna do is B for brush, D for default, making sure I'm not on the adjustment brush, but I'm actually in B for brush. And then I want to make sure that X is on top so we can hide those adjustments with it. Opacity up to 100%. I'm pretty much here now. I can just paint back in the people. So even though that um, it's done its job for me, I don't think it's any real more speed 
then I would be doing it in my kind of traditional way, if you've seen that, uh, the way that I work and things. So, but it still gives us a really good job and it's kind of extended the background as well with it. Um, finally, um, obviously there's that creation of the background. Um, so within here, all, all, all I've done, if I kind of click onto here, is interior of a fantasy castle, all in white with pillars and staircase. So probably the only difference that you'll see the way I'm working now is I'm creating um, the image behind the image instead of making the selection of the subject and then inverting the selection and then basically telling it to fill in. Uh, I, I kind of want the the kind of the, uh, the overall background with it. So with that in mind, I've got loads of different backgrounds that it's created for me. I have dropped on a uh, adjustment uh, layer of black and white just because it didn't listen to me in black and white. Um, and then kind of just choosing the kind of the best one. The one benefit we've got, of course, uh, is that as soon as it creates that, it's technically a smart object. So then I've gone in and basically added a Gaussian blur to the background. So if I double click onto the Gaussian, I can actually make it a little bit more blurred or a little less blurred, depends on how you're using things. So um, yeah, quick fixes in the backgrounds. I think for those of you just getting going in the likes of Photoshop, I think you're gonna love those kind of quick fixes to your studio photography. Um, but otherwise, you know, as far as the creativity, we know everything's ahead of us now and uh, the quality is just getting better and the variety and the accuracy is getting much, much better as well.